Excuse oh, oh, me. Oh, 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 God. Sorry, sorry. Hi. Sorry, you were saying. Do you mind if I ask you a question? What's a song? Um, yeah, so... Something that you sing? I'm hoping you can help me out. What is a song? Well, off the top of my head, I would say... A short poem or other set of words set to music or meant to be sung. Do you have a good definition of what a song is? A song is a recipe, not a meal. When the ability to record music was invented at the end of the 19th century, people did what they always do with new technology. They made it fit the way they already did things. Recording meant just that, making a record of a performance. It was a document, it was not a creative act. Popular song and jazz singers often recorded the same song more than once. Of course they did, they might vary things or use a different arrangement. It was absolutely accepted that songs belonged to their writers, not to their performers. And the performers and writers were seldom the same people. Performers were interpreters of other people's work. This was absolutely the attitude Elvis Presley had when he introduced the world to rock and roll in the 1950s. We work in the same way, only in different areas. <laughs> love me tender, love me sweet, never let me go. Many of his early hits were songs made famous by other people, and Elvis never wrote his own songs. Buddy Holly, yes, Elvis, no. Then along came the Beatles in 1967. Having spent several years playing through small amps at screaming, and I mean screaming, fans, the Beatles gave up on live concerts. They would still record, but now the recording, the thing that happened in the studio, was the event itself. It wasn't meant to reflect what they were doing on stage because they were never going on stage again. And so every minute detail became important. The studio itself became an instrument. From then on, the studio version of a song was the version. When you went to concerts, you would talk afterward about how far the band veered from the recorded version. That was the benchmark. A song was no longer chords, words, and a melody. A song was every nuance, every inflection, everything that happened in the studio was the, the song. Look you in the eye. When we listen to Creep by Radiohead, we naturally Just go in with this attitude. This is the song. The syncopated, distorted guitar, the faltering, half-mumbled vocals. We anticipate every moment, every breath. You float like a feather in a beautiful world I wish I was special You're so very special But I'm a creep How strange it was then when Postmodern Jukebox came along with their own version. No distorted guitar. That was replaced by a strolling, lolling horn section. The creep himself, Tom York, was replaced by the distinctly uncreepy Hayley Reinhardt. And so, while a whole new version of Creep was born, there was also a sense of rediscovery. Postmodern Jukebox don't reconstruct songs, they interpret, like they did in the old days. There's a distinct attitude change. Give me the chords. Give me the words and melody, the rest is up to me. And if some of the chords, words and melody get changed, well, that's music.
whatever you want. You're so very special. I wish I was special, but I'm a queen. A song is a recipe, not a meal.